Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to do a comparison video between two perfumes and this is a requested video by Jackie Rainstedler. Hopefully I've pronounced your name right, Jackie. I'm really sorry if I haven't. So the comparison is actually between Narciso for Her and by its notorious dupe, SJP Lovely. So Paula sent me this sample of Lovely and I also picked up Narciso for Her by Narciso Rodriguez. So this is the EDP version. So yeah, we're just going to do a bit of a comparison video and see what the differences, similarities between these two are and whether these are direct dupes of each other. So just a bit of perfume history first. So Narciso for her was originally formulated in 2004 as an EDT. It then came out in 2006 as the EDP. So the EDP is in the pink bottle. And Lovely was formulated in 2005. So SJP Lovely is widely regarded as one of the best celebrity perfumes and I would say that before Paula sent me this sample I hadn't tried it for maybe 10 years. I, I really I remember in my 20s not really being you know amazed by it. I thought it was just it was it was all right. It, it was something that I wasn't bothered by. It wasn't something I was ever going to buy is how I felt about it. So when Paula sent me the sample I was really shocked because this wasn't how I remembered it smelling. This was far better than I remembered this smelling. I, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. I, I think that's what made me want to buy Narciso because I thought if this is this good, what's this like? So this one, when you first spray it, it is quite alcoholy. You do get quite a blast of alcohol, but it does really quickly settle down into a really sort of light, bright, sparkling lavender scent. I know there is meant to be a martini note in this and maybe that's what I'm smelling when I smell the alcohol. There is something that's kind of citrusy, but yeah, lavender is really the overarching note. A lightly alcoholic kind of sparkling lavender is how this perfume feels initially. This perfume just feels clean. It feels really like something you could wear anyway where you weren't allowed to wear perfume because I don't think this projects very much. I think it sits really close to the skin and when it dries down, the lavender is still there, but there's also just like a really soft sort of light wood and also a slight warmth and muskiness. It's it's very, very slight, the warmth. It's not like, you know, I think there is meant to be amber in this, but it's, it's not like a sunshiny, bright, golden amber. It's a very light amber. I am really loving this. I think this is a really refreshing perfume. I think it's something that would suit all climates. It's not cloying, even with all that musk. And actually, I think the lavender really lifts it and I think it just makes it a little bit more interesting. I think it's kind of ageless and a bit timeless as well. I think it doesn't smell like it was made in 2005. It, it really could have come out now, but I, don't, I just don't think this perfume is something that's going to wow people. It's not something that you're going to go wow, I must have this. It's it's something that is just a very good everyday perfume. It's a, it's a worky perfume for me, this one. Um, so yeah, I'm not, not like head over heels in love with it, but I do think, yeah, I can see why it's regarded as a good celebrity perfume because it is a very good perfume. And for the price point and its versatility, it's it's a good buy. I think the problem comes if you do want something that projects because this isn't it. And the other problem is the longevity. The longevity is it's not terrible on me, but it, it just fades so much that it doesn't really matter whether it lasts six hours or whatever on my skin because nobody else can smell it. And sometimes that's OK, but, you know, not every single day. Sometimes you do want people to smell your perfume. So let's move on to Narciso for her now. So I bought this after trying Lovely. And yeah, I don't know what made me blind buy this. It, something just did. I, I just had this this feeling that I would love this because I love powdery scents. I love musky scents. So, you know, how could this go wrong? And after trying Lovely, it, it sort of convinced me. It made me think that I would I would just fall in love with this one. And do you know what? I was a bit silly because I didn't really think too deeply about the differences between the EDP and the EDT. And if you look at the notes, they're actually quite quite different. So the EDT is meant to be a little bit more lightly woody and it's also meant to be less fruity whereas this one is meant to be more fruity more floral um 
more more like more patchouli basically this when i when i compared them out of the no nozzles when i when i sniffed them together i thought wow they're really similar they're they're almost identical why you know why would anybody buy this if they could buy lovely but when i sprayed this i really felt like they were really different and i think that's because of the peach note that's at the top of this fragrance and honestly when i blind bought this I didn't check the notes. I just I just bought it. I don't know why I did that. Because I have a bit of a problem with peach. I quite often smell peach in fragrances as something plasticky. There must be some kind of aroma chemical they use for peach that I don't get on with. And I think the same thing is in here. So I've had this issue with Gucci Rush. I've had this issue with, with um, Dolce & Gabbana The One. There's something about peach in fragrances that if it's not a super fresh peach, it's something I don't really get on with. And I think that's what I could smell in a Sheen This Perfume. So when I sprayed it, I got a really kind of plasticky peach smell. And it's taken me quite a long time to get over that. And I really do feel like it's the peach combined with the patchouli that I'm having trouble with. The rose in this is also not super fresh. It's quite, it's quite a dusty rose. And I'm not that much of a fan of that kind of rose. I expected this fragrance to just be a musk and powder bomb. I expected it to be, you know, like everybody describes, like the super creamy, powdery musk that, that you hear about on YouTube. And it really wasn't. And I, I don't know whether people are just talking about the EDT and I haven't noticed because I noticed the EDT has osmanthus and maybe that makes it creamier. Maybe um, just the, the, the kind of the light woods in that the vetiver and other things just make it a little bit fresher perhaps i found this one a little bit cloying and a little bit heavy and certainly compared with lovely it was very 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 heavy in comparison so as this dries down it does become rosier and it does become muskier and there's a mid stage where you do smell like warmth from the amber and also a lot of the patchouli the patchouli does calm down and it does turn into a cleaner musk but in the middle stage, the patchouli really makes this a little bit dirty to me. And I think that's adding to why I don't like it, because of the patchouli in there with, with, the, with the peach. I think this fragrance in the dry down is definitely musky, but I wouldn't describe it as powdery. I would say that it's definitely like a close to the skin musk. It don't, really doesn't project in the, in the later stages. It only really projects during the, the peach patchouli stage, which is probably the bit where I don't really want it to project because I don't want to smell that. I'd say out of the two, this has the better longevity and the better projection. But I would say that as this reaches its base notes, it, the projection really does fall off a cliff. It, it is something that's quite close to skin by the end. Actually, you know, if you offered me a bottle of Lovely or you offered me a bottle of this, I'd choose Lovely every single day of the week. And I feel I feel like I'm saying something wrong here because... I feel like I should prefer this because this is the more expensive fragrance. This is the one that people talk about. This is the one that is widely regarded as one of the best powdery musks out there. And I don't like it. And that shocks me. I really, I really felt like this was a guaranteed win. So yeah, if, if anybody else out there has these feelings, please let me know because I feel like a fraud on YouTube saying this, but... I just, yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And I'm afraid it's it's not going to stay with me, I don't think. I think this one is, is definitely headed out the door. It's, that's how much the dislike is. I just can't imagine ever wanting to pick up this fragrance and wear it. And that doesn't happen that often for me. Normally, you know, I like things to the degree that I will keep them. Whereas I can see myself reaching for Lovely because it's just a little bit more light and sparkly and airy than this one. I think also I just like that that lift from the lavender. I think that really adds to the musk for me. And the musk is a lot cleaner in Lovely compared with this one. So as to the similarities for these perfumes, I'd say that when I smelt these from the nozzle, I thought they were identical. I, I honestly couldn't tell them apart. It's only when you spray these on skin that you notice how different they are. And I'd say that Narciso is definitely less linear than than Lovely. Lovely seems to stay quite similar throughout its lifetime, whereas Narciso definitely goes through different stages. And definitely, you know, with that peach note, when it sort of calms down and the patchouli disappears, that's a very different, very noticeable change in this perfume. 
I'd say as well that they have middling longevity, both of them. They're really quite similar in that respect as well. Um, and, but I, I don't see any other similarities. And I think that maybe comparing the EDT with Lovely would probably be a, a more useful comparison. So out of the two, I much prefer Lovely. And I'm wondering how much my choice of buying the EDP of Narciso for her has influenced which one I like. I really do feel, having looked at the notes, that I would ultimately prefer the EDT. And I just feel like it might be a bit fresher and a little bit more me, a little bit sort of lighter. If you are looking into buying Narciso for her, I would first carefully consider the EDT because it's meant to have very similar longevity to the EDP. And I would also look at Narciso Poudre, which is one of the cubes. Narciso Poudre is, is a fragrance that I really love and it's very much more powdery than Narciso is. But it also does have a really nice musk and it also does have a rose note. So in a way, it, it's got a feeling of Narciso for her, I think. But to me, this is just the better fragrance and the one that I would would sort of steer you towards. But, you know, it depends what you want. If you don't if you don't like a super powdery fragrance, this isn't the fragrance for you because it is it is a powder bomb. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. Um, probably not what everybody expected me to say. So please let me know what you think of these fragrances. And I'd be really interested to know if you love Narciso. Please tell me what I'm missing out on. What am I not seeing in this fragrance that everybody else seems to see? If you've enjoyed this video, please press the like button. And also please consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.